This is Jackie, Larissa, Amy and Ilan. We're here to talk to you about poverty and Indigenous Australians. So, what is poverty? Poverty is defined in the Oxford Dictionary as the state or condition of having little or no money, goods or means of support condition of being poor. However, as per the ACOSS, we measure poverty as the number of people living below the poverty line of 50% of the media household income. This is the poverty line used by the OECD and in 2012 equated to the disposable income of less than $400 a week for a single adult. And two are Indigenous Australians. There are two distinct groups of Indigenous Australians. One group is the Torres Strait Islanders, who come from the islands north of Cape York in Queensland. Another group is Aboriginal Australians, people who come from all other parts of Australia. Why is it important to focus on the Indigenous Australians? Together as a group, we made the rational decision to focus on our research on Indigenous Australians. We felt it was necessary to explicitly discuss the poverty which Indigenous Australians are living amongst each day. As a group, we hope this video brings out the respect in which we have for Indigenous communities and the harsh reality which is endured by many Indigenous people. It is important for all Australians to acknowledge the existence of poverty within our own country and to promote and implement pre prevention strategies to combat and alleviate the pain associated with poverty. Ab study. What is Ab study? Ab study is funding given to Indigenous students to help with the cost of study, housing and living expenses as well as travel. What does it include? This includes covering the cost of uniforms, textbooks, stationery, travel to and from school, excursions, rent and board. How does Ab study work? Ab study is a payment given to either the student or the caregiver or parental guardian depending on the age. The amount of payments is dependent on the individual circumstance. Are there conditions? Conditions of ab-study include the individual must not be receiving any other form of financial help for their study. Who can get ab-study? You must be of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander descent, identify as an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, be accepted as an individual by the community in which you have lived in or live in, be an Australian citizen and live in Australia, and most importantly be covered of one of the seven ab-study awards. Who is eligible for ab study? To be eligible for ab study, you must be enrolled in an approved course in secondary or primary school, TAFE or university, or be doing any entry tests or assessments into the approved course. You are also eligible if you are doing a full time Australian apprenticeship. The ab study is comprised of seven awards. The different awards are Schooling Award A. For this award, you must be 15 years or younger or 14 years or older as of Jan 1st of the current year. You must be enrolled as a full-time primary or secondary student who is living at home or not approved for living away from home. You automatically get a school term allowance and school fees allowance. This is paid to the parental guardian. Schooling Award B. For this award, you must be 16 years or older or 15 and in state care or independent care due to being an orphan, special adult status in a traditional community, have or had a dependent child, caring or have custody of another person's dependent child, or have spent a total of six months in lawful custody. You may also be eligible for this award if it is unreasonable to live at home or your parents are unable to take care of you due to them being in prison, missing, mentally incapacitated or living in a nursing home. You must be enrolled in a full-time primary or secondary study. This also covers any age doing full-time secondary studies. Tertiary Award. This award covers full-time st tertiary students or apprentices. Part-time Award. This covers a student doing, at any age or 18 years or older doing secondary studies. This is for part-time students only. Masters and Doctorates Award. This covers students doing any masters or doctorate degree and must be a full-time study load. Student or Australian Apprentice in Lawful Custody Award. This covers full-time trainees doing traineeships or full-time apprentices that have been in lawful custody for more than two weeks. And lastly, testing and assessment. About Indigenous Australians. Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islander people make up about 3% of Australia's national population. Most Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders can be found in New South Wales or Queensland. Together, both states represent 60% of the Indigenous population. 
It is important to note that the Indigenous Australian population is fairly young, with two thirds of the population under the age of 30, and with 46% composing of those under 20 years of age. The 2014 Household Income and Labour Dynamics in Australia survey discovered Indigenous Australians were more likely to experience poverty in comparison to other Australians. It was also found that Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islander people were less likely to exit welfare. There is a strong link between poverty and unemployment. This is because of the low levels of income support payment to those experiencing unemployment. The causes of poverty in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities has a big impact on their well-being. The Department of Social Security data set 2016 found 18.9% of youth allowance other were being paid out to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. 32,387 Indigenous Australians were on parenting payment single and 9.6% of those receiving new Star Allowance identified as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. Housing is another big issue faced by Indigenous Australians. While a house with no more than two adults per bedroom and access to working facilities allows a household to function effectively, overcrowding and the absence of working facilities such as running water and a working stove poses serious health risks to those living in poor housing conditions. The 2014 to 2015 NATSISS provides information on housing based on the Canadian national standards for housing appropriateness. The NATSISS found one in five Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people aged 15 years and over were living in a home that was overcrowded which required additional bedrooms and or bathrooms. It was also found that more than one third of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people aged 15 years and over in remote areas were living in overcrowded conditions, almost three times the rate in non-remote areas. Poverty is only one measure of financial hardship. Other useful measures and indicators that assist in understanding the circumstance and experience of hardship include financial stress, deprivation, housing stress and food insecurity, ACROSS 2016. Our study is a greatly needed encouragement to the Indigenous community. It has increased the attendance of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders in school. In 2014 to 2015, 96% Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children aged 4 to 14 years usually attended school, which matches the standard attendance rate. In the same years, about 1 in 5 Indigenous Australians aged 15 years and over were enrolled in formal study. Of the 21%, 15% were studying full-time. In 2014-2015, around one quarter of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people aged 15 years and over had completed Year 12 or equivalent. The proportion of Aboriginal and Tor Torres Strait Islander people aged 15 years and over who had completed Year 12 or equivalent increased from 2002 to 2008 and again continued to the upwards trend from 2008 to 2014-2015, reaching 26%. It is obvious that the actual causes of poverty in Aboriginal communities throughout Australia cannot be blamed on just one thing. The causes of poverty in this group have dated back to when Australia was first discovered by the Europeans and then invaded. It is difficult to distinguish poverty in terms of Aboriginal communities as this means discarding their culture and way of living and comparing them to non-Aboriginal cultures. But in terms of income and living conditions, Indigenous Australians are the most disadvantaged and poorest sector of Australian society. One of the causes of poverty that has been talked about is the high prison rates for Indigenous Australians. It is believed that these high prison rates are mostly because of racial views. 
Indigenous Australians are 14.8 times more likely to be imprisoned than a non-Indigenous person. When you think about the fact that Indigenous Australians make up only 2.5% of the population of the country, yet account for 26% of the prison population, it must mean there is a huge issue when it comes to Indigenous people being able to provide financially for their families. As you could imagine, if a large amount of Indigenous families have even one member imprisoned, it would dramatically affect their householding. Indigenous Australians have one of the highest rates of addiction in the country. In 2008, around one in six Indigenous Australians over 15 years old had alcohol addictions and high risk levels of alcoholism. As for smoking, in 2008, it was estimated that almost half of the Indigenous community were ongoing smokers. Not only is this an obvious hit to their health, but smoking and alcohol consumption is extremely expensive and is contributing to a loss of any disposable income certain Indigenous families may have. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders automatically have a disadvantage when it comes to education, which means they have less chance of completing schooling and gaining employment. A quote by Stephen Hagen is, even the brightest of students in these communities will struggle to attain a satisfactory school report card if they have to compete with members of three or more families permanently occupying the same dwelling. This continues the poverty cycle, meaning that the next generation will all also struggle gaining a head start in their education. It also affects the children when their parents cannot afford health care, so if the child gets sick, they suffer with their education. Access to education is important, and many Aboriginal families do not even have this. Poverty within Australia is currently being experienced by Indigenous Australians slash Torres Strait Islanders, typically known as the Aboriginal population. The key reason in which white Indigenous Australians are classified amongst the poverty category include the absence of resources to secure the necessities of life. Research shows that up until the late 1960s, many Indigenous Australians were excluded from mainstream services which other non-Indigenous members of the Australian society received. This has led to socio-economic disparities in areas such as employment, health and housing, therefore causing poverty to become prevalent amongst the Aboriginal population. Dr William Jonas, who was the former Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Social Justice Commissioner, disputed that still today Indigenous people are unable to equally benefit from mainstream services because they are insufficiently accessible. Homelessness Indigenous Australian Stumpy Brown commented in an interview her experience with poverty. She went on to say that we slept without blankets. All we had was a fire to keep us warm. Tina Ganamba, another Indigenous Australian, said that we all living in one house and in one room. There's Margaret, my mother, my brothers, Margaret's family, all living in one house. It is very overcrowded. However, we cannot afford any other type of living arrangements. In 2011, 19.3% of Indigenous people were living below the poverty line, compared to the 12.4% of other Australians. Over 23% of Indigenous Australians lived in overcrowded households in 2012. In very remote areas, the proportion was 53%. The impact of which living in poverty has on the Aboriginal population is negative and life-threatening. The consequences of living in poverty, especially with an Indigenous community, include higher rates of depression, lower self-esteem, lower life expectancy, suffering from alcoholism and other mental health issues. The suicide rates of Indigenous Australians, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, per 100,000 people, is double for Indigenous Australians when compared to non-Indigenous Australians. Lenore Geyer is a registered nurse, midwife and proud Boog Goldman woman from Palm Island in North Queensland. She is also a PhD and passionate educator, committed to developing the next generation of health professionals. She comments as to how the effect on poverty is having a negative influence on the community. It is unimaginable, and it's devastating when people die young in the community. The grief is palpable, especially when it's due to the impact of poverty.
When teaching Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students, it is important to have broad knowledge of their culture and incorporate this into teaching strategies. It is also important to make these students feel relevant and accepted and be aware of the community spirit that is involved in their culture. Having high expectations of the students and letting them know that they can achieve just as much as any other student can really help them in their education. Being aware of students' home lives is also important as this could have an effect on the behaviour of the students. <coughs> With the background knowledge of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students, it is important to recognise the hardship backgrounds which these individuals may have experienced. It is important to respect and recognise the cultural values which they hold important, such as initiation, ceremonies and the Dreamtime stories. It is fundamental to demonstrate empathy in all aspects of education, to ensure that the students from this population group can feel equally connected with their teachers, just like other non-Indigenous students. Finally, it is imperative that empowerment and engagement are themes which are prevalent amongst any learning community. However, it is vital within the Aboriginal community so that the gap can be closed and Aboriginal Australians and Torres Strait Islanders are able to ease into lives above the poverty line, therefore living out of poverty. Our group would like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and we hope that if you need any other information, you can find it in our attached resources. Thank you.